<clears throat> well, hello everybody. Hello, hello, hello. It's another episode of Let's Talk About This. And uh, as you can tell, I'm feeling a little bit better. Um, my voice is still kind of off. Kind of weird. Kind of like scraggly, I guess you could say. But I'm getting there. Um, I'm pretty much over my, my cold. I'm just got some lingering sinus drainage and whatever. Because, you know, that's cool. <coughs> and a minor cough that just doesn't want to leave me alone. So... Anyway, on th- on for the show. On with the show. Uh, tonight, tonight is an interesting one. Tonight is one that I know a lot of us can relate to, and we can all enthuse about. And uh, it's cars. Let's talk about this. <laughs> Schlang. I like that little. I always say that I like that sound effect, and I do. Um, cars, cars. Many of us have a car. Many of us have had many cars. Some of us have only had a single car throughout their whole life. And maybe there are a few younger listeners out there who do not yet have a car. Or maybe there's folks out there who uh, don't want to have a car, and that's perfectly fine too. Maybe there's people who had a car and don't anymore and just don't do cars anymore. And that's fine too. But since we're talking about it, we're going to talk about uh, the ins and outs about cars. Because they're they're marvels of of uh, engineering and there's so much that goes into cars these days compared to some of the earliest cars um i believe the first car is considered to be the model a ford and then there was the model t but i think the model a was I'll, i'm gonna look it up real quick because i don't want to be spouting out weird facts um model a ford Oh, these aren't. There we go. Oh, no, the Model T was the first. The Model T was the first. Yeah, it's generally read as the first affordable automobile, so maybe not the very first actual car. Um, But, yeah. And we've come a long way since then. That was in the the, uh, the early 1900s, um, like the 20s and 30s. So we've come a long way since then. <clears throat> Take a little drink here. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, and uh, there's all kinds of different cars. There's there's just regular old family cars. There's sports cars. There's hyper cars and super cars and electric cars and cyber cars and just all kinds of stuff now. And there's a lot of different uh, different manufacturers. You've got Ford and Dodge and Chevy and here in the United States, of course. And you've got Kia and uh, and Lexus and and Volkswagen and and all these different like all these different people build cars. Um, and it's impressive. It really is impressive. And you've got a lot of pricing in cars. And I and one thing about cars. And this is definitely like a, a grown up irritant kind of thing so if you're a younger person in the audience you might not really quite be interested in this part just yet but cars are never usually unless it's a very special specific kind of car are never usually as valuable as the first day that you get them they (laughs) over time immediately afterwards they start to get cheaper and you almost will never be able to resell it if you're going to. If you need to get a new car and you're trying to resell an old car, you almost will never be able to resell it for what you paid for it. Unless it's like a specific kind of what's considered a classic car. And and something that's very like particularly special on the market, something collectors want. Or or something like that. So cars. You got your you've got your your uh sedans which in uh in the UK they call them saloons saloon cars those are your big four door um like family style cars where you can fit like five people in it and uh and you got stuff in in the uh, the trunk or in the UK they would call it the boot um so you can haul st- like groceries you can haul your whole family plus your pets and uh, call it a day, right? Not always very remarkable, but sometimes they are. (coughs) 
you've got the coupe, which is in the UK they call it a coupe, which is usually a two door, more sporty car. Not necessarily always a sports car, but just a more, you know, zippy little car. And uh, generally two seater, and uh, maybe some trunk space. Then you got what's popular here in the United States. You got SUVs, sport utility vehicles. Those are big, 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 like trucks almost with big caps on the back. And you can fit like seven people, uh, an entire month's worth of camping gear, all of your pets, and the state of Rhode Island. And uh, <laughs> that's a bit of an exaggeration. But they're big. I have one. It's not the biggest SUV I've ever driven around, but it is good sized. Um, then you've got crossovers, which are between like a sedan and an SUV, and they're supposed to be more economical because they give you some of the hauling capacity and and passenger capacity of a uh, of an SUV, but also the smaller profile and a little bit of the zippiness of a smaller car. So, you know, that's interesting too. Um, but. Um, so yeah, and then you got your your supercars. Supercars are like race cars, but they're they're road road legal. You can't drive like certain race cars on the road. It, it's just not illegal. It's not legal because here in the United States anyway, because um, they, they're just either too powerful or something like that. Supercars generally, you can still drive on the road, and they're supercars because. They're more than your average. They go faster. They they have more features. They're they're generally like a more powerful vehicle, and they're more of like a toy almost than uh, than you know something you just drive around to the store and back. Um, and then you have the hypercars, which are ridiculously fast because they're supposed to push the envelope of what a car can do. They're supposed to be experimental. They're supposed to be you know they're ridiculously expensive. Um, they are the epitome of engineering and a lot of times those aren't road legal there's not very many there's there's some hypercars that are but a lot of them they're not because they're designed to be taken to a track and driven around on a racetrack and and doing like high performance stuff that's not that's not every case i'm, I'm going to be generalizing a lot because i don't want to like stumble over and take too much time on on smaller things but yeah hypercars um, and there's all kinds of different other categories in between, like you got dune buggies, you got, uh, you got pickup trucks, you got, um, all kinds of other things, you know, and people do things with their cars too, they modify their cars, uh, some people just like tweak them a little bit, some people just add racing stripes or decals, and some people have lifted trucks, in the United States that's a big thing, lifted trucks, they want to have trucks that are tall with big wheels and look like a monster truck um which generally ruins anything good about the vehicle <laughs> most of the time but it's supposed to look cool right it's supposed to look cool i don't know you tell me if it looks cool <laughs> what kind of cars have i had over the years i'm going to tell you my car history my first car was an Oldsmobile Color Sierra S. It was a four door, and uh, I didn't drive it much. I I bought it from my uncle, um, and uh, he was he was getting rid of it. He lived across the road from us, and. Um, He uh, he was just trying to get rid of it, and I was young. I was still living at home, and I was like, I, I need a car. I need to start practicing on a car at the very least. So I bought this car from him, and uh, it was uh, it was not very good. It was like a late '80s one, I think, and uh, I drove it a few times around my parents' driveway. We had a big wraparound driveway. And, uh, but by the time I actually was going to move and, and get my own place, the car was, was, it was falling apart. It was probably wasn't in bet great shape when I bought it. I probably got, you know, took, but you know, who knows? Um, 
it uh, it was so rusty that somebody bought it from my dad, which I didn't mind because I was like, whatever, it's not going to work. So somebody bought it from my dad. And uh, when they came to haul it away, the top half separated from the bottom half from the wheels and stuff. So all like the top stuff with the doors and all that stuff like came off the bottom part. It was that rusty. So that's that was fun. So I didn't get much use out of that. My my second car, which was actually the first car I actually drove around, was a Chevy Beretta, a two door, two door Chevy Beretta, uh, which is like it, it's a little zippy car. It's a like a coupe, I guess you could say. And um, it wasn't anything particularly fancy, but I had I I liked it. It was like a late eighties as well. I'm pretty sure. Um, and uh, I practiced in it. I didn't have a license. I didn't have a a a permit as you need before you get your li- li- uh, license here in Ohio. I practiced by driving down to the gas station, which was like just a couple minutes from my house, and driving back because there was at least one stoplight. And there was at least one stop sign along the way. So it gave me practice in two spots. Plus I had to turn into my driveway in and out. So it gave me practice. And uh, I drove that car for a while. Once I got my license and everything, I did pretty good with that car. Um, eventually the the engine blew up. Engine blew up. It was just an old car. That's how it was. I uh, didn't like the way I did oil changes at the time. So it was real finicky and eventually decided I didn't want to be my friend anymore. So so then I got another Beretta, <laughs> which was a four-door, and it was older than the one I'd had and was in worse shape, and I didn't realize it, it was pretty dumb and it looked nice, and this like small corner lot de- dealership sold it to me. And it started giving me problems like within the first couple of weeks, like overheating and things, and so I took it back to them, and they had to rebuild the engine. <laughs> And they, they weren't going to pay for the whole thing. They're like, well, you must have done something to it. And there wasn't legally much I could do about it because it was one of those places where it's like you buy it and it's yours. Um, it wasn't something that had a bunch of insurance from, like, you, so I had car insurance, of course, but not like, you know, I didn't have a warranty or anything like that. So, But I I always had problems with it forever after. I, I It never quite went well. It always overheated. It always gave me problems. And um, eventually I had to sell that too. Then, I was driving, I was borrowing my uh, my dad's Lincoln Navigator, which is a huge difference from a, uh, from a Beretta. A Lincoln Navigator is a big SUV, a big one. It was designed for, like, comfort, it's got leather seats and, and all this other stuff. It was a big vehicle, and it was a comfortable vehicle, but it was also old. And it had problems here and there. I had to replace the alternator and a couple other things in it. And uh, eventually I did something not very smart with it. And uh, and I wrecked it. I'm okay. Everybody was okay. I was the only person in the car. So uh, And I admittedly what I did was pretty pretty not very smart. It was, it was not a smart thing I did. And uh, I should not have done it. So I learned my lesson. Wrecked it. Wrecked it. Um, which I guess was a benefit to my dad because he'd been thinking about getting rid of it for a while and this way he could claim it on his insurance, I guess. Something or other. So, um, after that, I had... I got a truck from my mom. It was a Blazer. A Chevy Blazer. 4x4. Which I drove for quite a while. I, I had a lot of good times in that Blazer. It got me around town pretty well and um at the time i was going back and forth from where i lived in uh in the very edge of northeast ohio farther towards the center i I was on the border and i would go to akron every every month or so maybe a couple times a month so i was putting a lot of wear on it on the way back from one of those trips i hit black ice uh, it's one of the first times that I've ever actually hit black ice in a way that, wow, I didn't even see that. And, uh, 
smashed it up a little bit. So I got it fixed. That one wasn't my fault, like the uh, like the navigator was. I, I'll own the up to the navigator, but this was not my fault. This was generally ice, and I couldn't see it. So I I had it fixed up, but the garage I took it to, and I'm not going to name any names, and it's been years, so it wouldn't do any good anyway. But the garage, when they were finished, they didn't refill the oil and the other fluids. So they were like, okay, here, your car's done. So I took it home, not thinking. And then, like, not too long after that, I moved to Akron. So I drove it out there permanently. And then the engine started giving me trouble because I'd been driving it with no oil. They hadn't put any oil into it. And uh, by the time I, I got it into a shop, the engine was ruined. <laughs> Which was... Which was a shame, and I didn't think to check because I would. I figured, you know, they fixed it. Why wouldn't they have topped off the fluids and whatnot? But yeah, there was no oil in it, and uh, and it was it was destroyed. So I ended up having to sell that. I then, in again, in a long string of getting vehicles from family, this streak does break. Okay, I'm not like a, a family car moocher for all of my life. But uh, I have had some some financial circumstances that made it difficult for me to get vehicles of my own. But, um, like, the first bread I got, I bought it myself. The second one I did. And then after that, I had to borrow vehicles for a while and and get vehicles. But anyway, after the Blazer, I got, basically inherited, my grandmother, my late grandmother's um, Chevy Lumina. There's a lot of Chevys, as you can tell. My family was big Chevy people. Um, they were big, very big into Chevrolet. So I I inherited basically my grandma's, my late grandmother's uh, Chevy Lumina because she had passed. And my mom knew I needed a vehicle, and the family didn't know what to do with the vehicle, so she said, hey, I'll give it to, to my kid here. So so I took that, and that gave me a lot of good a good run, too. I, I drove that around for quite a while. Eventually, being Ohio, being winters, and having, you know, salt on the roads and things like that, if you're a person who lives in a place where there's winter and they put salt on the roads, you're going to understand. Um, the salt ruined the undercarriage, and uh, it started falling apart in a very unsafe kind of way. Um, and various parts of the car were hanging here and there, so it was not safe to drive anymore. So I traded that to a local guy here in town who wanted to fix it up. And I I hope he did okay with it. I hope he didn't get himself hurt. But um, I traded it to him for a Kia Optima, an older one, which was the first Kia I'd ever have. And uh, it was a nice little zippy car. It did pretty well for a while. Then it would develop these little problems here and there, these little things that that gave me problems and issues. Uh, The biggest one was the throttle sensor was messed up. And uh, so it would constantly be trying to go as fast as humanly possible all the time. Even while you're sitting at a red light, it would just be like, really loud, as if I'm just gunning the engine. And um, I tried to replace it once. Didn't work out. <laughs> Didn't work out. I tried to do it myself. And uh, and I have pretty bad fumble fingers. And I did pretty bad. So, um, so it sat for quite a while. And um, eventually it was just like, I gotta get rid of it. It's not doing anybody any good. It's too expensive to fix now. You know, it's worth it. So, sold that. And we had a really good year as far as uh, personal income here, where I'm living. And we were like, you know what? Let's set aside some tax money. Let's do this and let's get a proper car. So, I went to a lot. It was a used car lot. You know, it didn't have... I didn't have money for a new, brand new car, but I went to a used car lot. And I bought the car that I have now, which is a Nissan, um, Nissan Murano, which is an SUV. And it has done very well with me. It's had a, a few spots here and there. I had to replace a strut and something else on it. And, um, it's got a couple other little minor things that are kind of annoying, but I'm, I can get those fixed. It's not anything that's like, a dreadful issue. It's a used car, you know, you're going to have little things here and there. But it's done very well, and I've been able to haul stuff, and I've been able to get where I'm, where I'm going, and all that good stuff. So, 
there you go. There's my complete car history for those who were super interested. Um, <laughs> I uh, I passed my driver's test. I I don't know if I did. I, I don't know if I can call it the first time. I didn't fail it. It was a weird situation. Everybody I've talked to says, "Why didn't they just fail you? They make you do everything over again." Um, when I first took my test, my driving test, I took my turns too wide because I'd been driving, practicing on bigger vehicles, and I didn't want to hit the curb and stuff like that. So, but everything else was good. So the instructor said, "Hey, practice your turning and then come back, and then that's all you got to do. You just got to do a little bit around the course and show me that you can turn without turning too wide, and then you can have your license." So I said, "Okay." Set a schedule for like a week or two after. Came back, did it, nailed it, done. Passed. So, like I said, it, it wasn't a failure. It was just they were like unsure. And because uh, I, I guess I knew what I was doing, everything else, and they could tell. And they were just like, well, let's make sure that you just have this part down and then you're good. Practice up a little bit more. And uh, I've never had my license taken away. I have had a couple of speeding tickets. That does happen, but uh, but not many. Two, I would say, just two, in a quite a long history of driving. Um. So yeah, that's my car history, my driving history. Um, if you guys have some interesting car stories, by the way, definitely drop a line on the Spider Does Things page on Facebook. And, uh, and I would gladly love to hear about them. Now, what uh, if I had unlimited funds? What are some of my favorite cars? What what would I want to drive? I've always liked mid to late seventies Corvettes. It's another Chevy car because my dad had one. He might still have it. It just sits in a garage, going nowhere. But um, I would like one just for a nice cruising car, not to go racing or anything like that. But I think it would be oh, they're they're a gorgeous looking car from a different time, before the eighties came and, and started smashing everything into all angular everything else, and then the nineties and two thousands started rounding things in weird bubbly kind of ways. Um, but I like I like the seventies Corvettes, and uh, I like I also like. I, I don't know if it's a supercar or a hypercar. I think it's a supercar. It's a Bugatti. Bugatti Chiron. The Bugatti Chiron is one of my favorite cars because it's just so. It was. It's been the fastest road legal car in the world many, many, many times. It held the rain for quite a while, and then every time they beat it, they squeezed a little bit more life out of it, and it, it got even more, which is not necessarily why I would want it because I can't drive like that around here. And I'm not a race car driver. I'm not a race car driver. I would probably run into trouble if I tried to ra- drive like that. But um, it's just a powerful, big, tough car, and it's comfortable. Like, not all supercars are comfortable. A lot of them are designed just to, to be raw and unfiltered and just give you a good race experience. But this one is comfortable. It it looks so comfortable. It looks like a good ride. And, man, it'd be an excellent car. But it costs upwards of, like, a million dollars or more. So <laughs> it's not going to happen. Not going to happen. I doubt it. Not for me. More likely I would get one of those old Corvettes long before I'd be able to afford a Bugatti. Now other people in my household are big fans of Subaru. Subaru, of course. My dad had a Subaru. And I can never find exactly what I thought it was. I thought I had it pinned down once and now I forgot. But they're known for making rally cars. What's a rally, you say? It's a type of race where you do time trial time trials, which is basically you try to beat other people's time going around a particular course. And it's usually a mix of pavement and dirt pavement not pavement pavement and dirt through like a rural or a snowy or some kind of place where it's gonna give you, you know, run for your money. You know, if the terrain is gonna be difficult. And Subaru has been well known in the the uh the rally circuit for a long time and uh they're one of those types that they make a particular kind of car the impreza and they make 
a new version of it every year or every other year. So a lot of times it's the same car, just with the latest like bit squeezed out of it, latest engine performance, the latest tech, and this and that. But it's like the same car. Um, Porsche. Porsches have been known to do that. Porsche 911s are a lot of times a very similar line of cars. They look very similar. They feel very similar. They drive very similar. But it's like a proven technique. So, you know, you might as well just add to the overall... Um, performance and just keep on going right um that that's that's the other kind of car the folks in my house like they like porsches porsches and subarus and uh volkswagen beetles volkswagen beetles everybody knows the beetle herbie the love love bug you know the volkswagen beetle uh these are the older ones they made a couple of different new ones over the years and now they've been like totally discontinued and it's funny because the Beetle was supposed to be an inexpensive working man's car in Nazi Germany. And it was developed by the Nazis to be like their... Before they got all Nazi-like. <laughs> it was when they were still looking like they were, oh yeah, we're trying to be helpful to our people before everybody turned into a murdering sort of mood. Um, <laughs> but the Beetle's been around. People loved it. People loved it, and they they they're very modifiable. You can get the basic model, you can get the uh, the Doom buggies, uh, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, the Beatles. Uh, I also like, again, it's another Chevy. I don't know what I have with Chevys. I mean, I don't like other specific Chevys. Like I don't, I'm not into Cavaliers. I'm not into Chevy Volt, which is their electric car. I'm not into that kind of stuff. But I do like other things, very specific ones. Um. One thing I like is the Chevy El Camino, which is like a big sedan, but it's got a truck bed, and there's a cat eating my hand. Ouch. You guys heard me struggling with dick. But um, it's got like a truck bed, so you can haul stuff in it, but also drive it like a sedan. So I, I like the look of the El Camino. It just looks so strange and different, and uh, but it's a fun car. Now... Speaking of electric cars, electric cars are the big new thing. And we've had versions of electric cars a lot over the years. Most cars we have drive on gasoline or diesel, diesel fuel, okay? But uh, electric cars have been around for a while, and there's a big push for everybody to get it into electric because there's more efficient and things like that. The problem is you can't, there's not every place has charging capacity, which means you might end up getting someplace far from home and then you're stuck for a while. But uh, but you can get a an electric car in all the different types. You can get an electric sedan, you can get an electric coupe, you can get an electric uh, pickup truck now. Ford has the, the Lightning, and Tesla has their Cybertruck, which looks like a space age, like... It'd be like a armored assault vehicle from the Aliens movie. Um, but they also have SUVs that are electric now. And uh, they have supercars and hypercars that are electric. Like the Rimac. The Rimac is a pretty interesting vehicle. I have seen one go up in flames on a popular racing show. <laughs> popular racing show. Um, well, a popular car show, I should say. With uh, three uh, folks from the UK who uh, who drive cars. And I didn't want—I don't want to get sued by their various people involved, so I don't want to say anything. But um, but they're entertaining to watch. So you can get electric. But the next big thing, which I guess it, a few years ago the kids would say the new hotness, which I don't think they say anymore. I don't know what the, what I don't know what you would say now for that phrase, the new hotness. I don't know. But uh, the next big thing is hydrogen-powered cars, hydrogen fuel cells, which basically uses hydrogen fuel and uh, puts out water into the air. And they're supposed to be hugely efficient. We've got buses. We've got buses that you can take around town. And um, they're hydrogen-powered. So the technology is here. And, uh, and it saves money and it saves the environment if you're into that kind of thing. And it's getting to on the market regular vehicles that you and I can can buy. 
uh, slowly, slowly, and I hope it continues because I think hydrogen is a better, a better idea than electric. Because you can you can more easily replace a gasoline infrastructure with a hydrogen infrastructure than you can from a gasoline to an electric infrastructure. Okay, that's what I think. And uh, and I think hydrogen is, is kind of the way of the future. I think hydrogen vehicles are, are super cool, honestly. And uh, and eventually, if they're commonplace, and I'm not absurdly old and can't drive anymore, who knows? I might like to get one. I don't know. But uh, but cars. And there's other things we can talk about. Like you can get your cars with different engines. You can get the V4 and the V6 or the straight six. What's the difference, you say? I'm going to I'm going to say some uh I'm going to say some some magical phrases here that you may or may not understand. If you're a car person, you'll know. This is from Wikipedia. The straight six is a piston engine with six cylinders arranged in a straight line along the cam sh- the crankshaft. Okay? So, if you know what that means, that's cool. Now, what's a V6? It's a six-cylinder piston engine where the cylinders share a common crankshaft and are arranged in a V configuration. Ah. Now, the V thing is kind of like the most common that I've heard of. you got your V6s and your V8s, and occasionally you get a V12, which are obnoxiously powerful. V6 and V8 are the two commest, most common ones, plus the four cylinders that you get around here. My vehicle is a V6, if I remember correctly. Um, And each one designates how much power you can get out of that engine. But it doesn't necessarily mean you can go faster, depending on the circumstances. Um, A car with a a four-cylinder engine is probably going to be lighter than a car with a V6 or a V8. And it may be able to zip around corners much faster, and you can beat a larger engine car in a in a race that uses a lot of cornering. But if you have used a race that uses a lot of straights, or that uses a lot of like if you're doing a drag race, the more powerful cars are eventually going to easily overtake the less powerful lighter cars most of the time. I mean, there are all kinds of different variables that go into there, so it can be a, an entirely different game, you know, depending on on how you do that kind of stuff. But that's getting into some real techie stuff and I don't I'm not doing highly technical things on the show here. I'm just having a good talk about about cars because I, I like some cars. Um speaking of racing, there's lots of different races out there. There's the rally, rally racing. You can catch those on, on I don't know specific channels or apps or whatever. But here in the United States of course we have NASCAR which is a specific kind of car, a specific kind of race. And you have to do a certain number of laps. And that's really big here. Um, there's, uh, they don't have that in in overseas. They generally don't have NASCAR type stuff. They have other kind of races. Um, but NASCAR is real big here. And it's inspired a lot of things. Like there's a cartoon, of course, called Cars by Disney. And it's about NASCAR style race cars that are like living cars with faces on them and stuff like that instead of people um and there's three movies actually three cars movies cars one two three and then they have offshoot movies they've got planes where there's planes with faces and they go and they they do plane races and that's even crazier and uh i'm sure i'm surprised they don't have boats yet because there's boat racing too there's boat racing <laughs> but we're not getting into that we're not talking about boats we're not talking about planes we're talking about cars cars yeah, cars. What do you use your car for? Is it just a daily driver? You just drive to work and back? Do you do you go on camping trips? Do you go cross country? Um, if you do cross country, go cross country. There's larger vehicles, which are RVs, which are like portable houses, basically. They've got kitchens and bathrooms and bed space. And uh, it's like driving a bus, but more comfortable. Um then you have buses, which are mass transit, You've got all the kinds of seats and everything. And in the overseas, in the UK especially, they have the double decker buses, which I can't even imagine. Like, I can't imagine having to learn how to drive something like that that's so top heavy. 
No jokes, please. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. There's so many different kinds of uh, automobile vehicles in the world. They're everywhere. And there's there's such a variety. And some of them are awesome and some of them are not. Like, there are some cars I don't like. I don't like Ford Mustangs. Not necessarily because I think the car itself is bad, but because every time I've known anyone who drove one, they were kind of a jerk. <laughs> and if you're out there and you drive a Mustang, I'm not calling you a jerk. I just know that so many people that I know who uh, enjoy Mustangs are, are kind of jerky people. <laughs> no offense. Um, and people who drive Honda Civics tend to always want to race everyone all the time because they have a thing about Honda Civics and I don't like them. I think a Honda Civic sounds like a lawnmower because it's got a little four-cylinder engine. <laughs> nee, 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 nee. No, I don't know. If you like them, you like them. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not saying you're a bad person. I'm not, you know, please don't call up here and be like, you insulted my car. I'm going to whoop on you. Don't, don't do that. I'm not, it's not that serious. Okay. It's not that serious. You like what you like. I like what I like. And that's fine. Um, but yeah, cars. I like cars. I like cars. I don't always like to go for big, long drives. I'm not a road trip kind of person so much. I take maybe one long trip a year or every couple of years, and that's pretty much enough for me. I like to take a trip to the store and back. I don't like traffic, <laughs> which is a problem when you live in the city. I don't like traffic. so, And I don't like country roads where they just curve all over the place because it makes my stomach turn. So what do I like? Straight, empty highways where no one else is driving but me, which is not likely. <laughs> You're a grouchy old man, Spider. I know. I sure am. So, that's what we got. That's cars. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. That's all I got for tonight. And um, I will get back at you guys next week. Of course, since today is Monday when I'm recording this, but not maybe necessarily when you hear it, but when I'm recording it. Um, that means tomorrow is Tuesday, so it'll be Twitch Tuesday, and then uh, nothing on Wednesday, and then the Uncanny Spirits Club again on Thursday followed by this uncanny earth on friday okay excellent so i will catch you guys next time enjoy